Hi guys, so welcome to Wild and Basic. This is episode three of this new season. I honestly don't know how I'm making it so far in this episode because these video recordings have been so challenging and it takes so much work, like editing it. I thank God I'm not doing it, but I just can't believe that I'm saying it. It's a lot of work. So, in today's episode, because I've got this question so many times and I feel like also this would be very interesting to talk about because a lot of people have been asking me, but also it's a very popular topic. New York City and reflecting on my time living in New York City and why I left New York City. I wrote down some things that I have learned over the years, but also things that one should like think about if you're considering moving there like permanently or just just checking it out and see how it feels. Uh, this is going to be the episode for you. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. It's not going to be just all my reasons of leaving New York City, but also more about like the lifestyle and the things that I have experienced when I used to live there. So I'm not going to give an update this time because I feel like I gave so much update last time about like my life and I feel like that's going to be a long topic. So I'm going to put that into next episode and next episode is also going to be a guest episode. I have already recorded and it's going to be a very fun one so I'm very excited for that but let's get started on like one of my reasoning like living in New York City so the first one this is actually a pretty obvious one that I feel like a lot of people would definitely like say or so you're already expecting it the high cost of living it's obviously a very very expensive place there's just a lot of cost associated with it it's starting from housing eating just like living honestly but also on top of it like taxes like it's a lot so starting by living is like so rent obviously it's very expensive you can definitely find more affordable places but the word affordable is kind of relative to everyone like it really depends on who you are or where you are because like what I'm paying right now in Miami is actually considered affordable in New York City versus in Miami it's not really considered affordable like does that make sense that's what I'm trying to say so it's very very different <laughs> to look at but in New York City like if you want to find something that is like affordable and in like a good area that's going to be very difficult and like people would consider paying 3-4k for a studio as affordable because that's just how messed up the <laughs> how messed up and how crazy expensive the rent is but usually most of the time people end up paying like 4 to 5k for a nice one bedroom apartment and you know like how crazy that sounds but that's just so normal on top of it is just like the whole lifestyle so in Miami or a lot of places like California you're more used to just like cooking because you don't want to drive all the time you're at home it's like even if you go out you go out once in a while or you just go for drinks New York City is very different in that style because you're constantly constantly going out for coffee for lunch like for dinner it just that's like the lifestyle like it's always like that and you end up spending a lot of money like just the coffee alone I mean coffee is so expensive everywhere these days honestly but just the coffee alone you could be spending like seven to eight dollars for something like so basic like a latte and even if you add like oat milk or something like non-dairy alternative it could even go like I don't know as close to like ten dollars which is like so ridiculous I, I just can't justify that okay so those are one things and the other thing is like people definitely go out a lot so that adds up to the whole price of like just living I guess because people don't cook a lot that's the whole thing in New York City people just don't cook like even if you have a nice apartment many people that I have met and or I have been to their apartment it's just like you would never see them cooking 
versus like it's a very different story in other places. Lastly, the taxes. This is a lot. <laughs> like, I am self-employed, so I am this year still will be like as a New York resident, I will be paying New York taxes. You pay state tax, you pay um, federal obviously, but also on top of it, if your address is based on like the city, you are going to be paying city taxes as well. So that is something just so outrageous that adds up on top of the whole thing that you are paying. It could add up a lot. I mean, thank God I have business expenses that I that can kind of like deduct it from what I'm paying for my taxes. But it is definitely a lot in taxes and comparing to the lifestyle that you're getting, it's just not adding up. So those are the whole things that's associated with the cost. Because cost is definitely really, really expensive in New York City or just whole New York area, honestly. The state itself is just like, it's a lot. But you do get to save some more if you're living outside of New York a bit, like New Jersey or maybe like upstate New York or maybe a little bit of Long Island, but then there goes Hamptons that's like even more expensive. Everything is like overpriced for no apparent reason. So you're not gonna be getting so much for your value. That was the first reasoning. So the, so the second reasoning, this is very also common thing that people would expect, is just New York City is a very crowded place. Every single corner, every single place that you're going, you're always going to have a crowd. You're always going to have a wait time. It's just a lot. Sometimes I feel like you get so caught up and you're like, oh my God, I want my own personal space. I want to be like by myself for a bit, just or just like walk around, but like without touching anyone, without getting shoulder checked all the time. Like it, it just, it can be a lot. And I feel like in the beginning, that made me feel good that like, oh my God, there are like so many people like, just it's a lot like it's fun like it's really crowded like there's that energy that's coming but over time that gets super super exhausting and you're kind of like in your own world even though you're in this like crowd but you end up feeling like I don't know alone and also somewhat like lonely and that's that feeling I feel like it brought living in New York City which I feel like some people did mention that like a lot of people never say it, it's just I feel like this is a fact, it's like New York, Manhattan is an island, so, and I feel like everyone is kind of like, feel like an island in their own way, although like you're always accessible to, like places always accessible, you can go to places, you can reach out to people so quickly, but everyone is kind of like doing their own thing, like their own little island, and like, it does feel like that in many ways that people don't realize. I mean, it's easy to socialize, it's easy to make friends, but there's that, like, lack of connection sometimes because everything is happening so quickly and you're meeting so many people. Sometimes that doesn't really work out in a way that you would make, like, long-lasting friendships or connections over time, which is not a lot of people talk about. Lastly, from that jumping on, is the hustle culture. Because New York is such a fast-paced place, there's just like, everything is so quick. Like, it just on and on, one meeting after another, one work after another. People rarely have one job. They literally have like, I don't know, two, three jobs or side hustles, which is, I feel like it's a cool thing, but then you don't have a life. People rarely have lives in New York, honestly. I feel like 90% of what they do is literally associated with their work and that's kind of like a toxic environment in a way. I feel like it's great to have some sort of a discipline, especially in your earlier 20s or like even like your teen years. I feel like it teaches you a lot and I feel like that's what I learned at the time when I like was in New York and like the whole time. I feel like it taught me so much but I feel like over time you realize like you're getting so tired, you're agitated, constantly working, constantly just like hustling uh, on your way through to like make it to the top, which is that's what everyone wants in New York. And I feel like that's like why they're there. It's like when you're at a party or something, 
yes, people will try to be nice with you, but nine out of ten, they are more curious about like what kind of job you have, where do you work, and they immediately think about like how they can use you or how you can use them. Something sometimes doesn't feel so genuine, and that's just kind of like I guess like the lifestyle because everyone is like trying to make it to the top and trying to achieve their goals and dreams. In a way, they do have a purpose. I can see that. Okay, number four. This is one of my reasonings that I'm kind of like, huh, I'm not sure. Like at first, I didn't notice this, but almost every activity in like New York City, it involves drinking. And I don't mean like just involve drinking, it's just like, it is all about drinking. Like, in Miami, in California, California is maybe a little different story, but yeah, like people drink socially here and there, but not everything is around drinking. But because New York, right, like, weather changes, things are different, right? Like, it's not always, like, warm. So there are, almost every other activity would be drinking. Like, going out, eating, drinking. That's it. Versus, like, in Miami, you know, there's so many activities you could do. So like, you can go to a beach, you can play sports, like, you can do jets, you can ride a jet ski. Like, there's so many activities you can do. It's not just drinking. Yes, some of it you could do this while drinking. But I feel like in New York, it's just like, it's just drinking. Like, 9 out of 10, every activity is just drinking. And that was kind of like, I don't know, it was like, it was not my vibe. It's like, don't get me wrong, it's like, drinking socially is fun. And like, like it's a cool, I mean, it's a thing. Like, I, I would do it, you know, because it's like a fun thing to do. Like, in a social crowd, in a social gathering. But is it something that I would be like, I want to be doing? Besides just like having fun doing other things, probably not. But sadly, that's what all the activities involved in there. And I was kind of like tired and I got to a point that I was like, I don't know if I want this anymore. And every other weekend, I was just kind of like, I'm over this. Like, I, I don't want to be going out all the time. I don't want to be like just drinking all the time. Like, I want to go to a beach. I want to like, I don't know, enjoy my life. But like, I can't do that in New York. It's like, it, even in like the summer, in order to go to the beach, you have to take a train. You have to drive for an hour or two to get to a beach. And like, then the area is so crowded. You can barely do anything. Just same, like there's a lot that you have to sacrifice for your mental health or just for yourself. And I was just kind of like not having it. Number five, this is something changed over the years because it was such a different experience when I first got to New York versus like nowadays or after the pandemic because things really, really escalated. New York has always felt safe place for me. I never for a second, I was like, oh my God, I'm scared. But over the years, things changed and when I started to use the subway or when I started to go to places, I started to feel a certain type of way. And I never ever felt like that before. Like New York has always been a safe place for me. But ever since like the incidents, like people getting pushed over in front of the train, on the train tracks and things like that. I was kind of starting to feel a certain way like and I can see that people were too like people always like try to be against the wall like not close to the train track and like many other things it's like it just never felt like um what it was before like subway was never a place in New York that people would be like oh my god I'm so scared to use the subway I don't think any New Yorker would have said that or has said that but that's what it has come to I don't know how it is now, maybe it's changing, but it was still a uh, mixed, like mixed thoughts. Like people were still like, I'm not sure if I wanna use the subway, I'm not sure if it's a safe place. People were using a lot of Uber. Like it was just not really the vibe. Like I feel like New York is a place that like, young people have fun. It's like, it's like a place that you go out, drink and fun. Like it's. It's like a fun place to be at, but I feel like if it's not a safe place to be at, 
then you're like, what's going on? Like, perfect example, put the subway aside. Hell's Kitchen is one of the very popular areas in uh, New York for gay crowd. Like, it's a gay neighborhood, a lot of gay bars, like, a lot of crowd like that. Like, you would see, like, 9 out of 10, there's a lot of gay crowd there, you would see. It's like, 90% uh, uh, is gay crowd. But for the past few months or so, like, there have been, like, uh, videos and, like, or the news articles that saying that, like, people have been throwing rocks into, like, gay bars or, like, people getting, uh, I don't know, harassed after they're leaving the bar or something like that. That is so unreal because New York City has one of the biggest gay populations. So imagine if people are going through something like that in New York City. I cannot imagine someone else going through the similar thing in somewhere else. It could be way worse. If people are experiencing it in New York, I cannot imagine what people are experiencing in Idaho. Maybe that was just a random thought, but I'm not sure if this is happening in Idaho. I just meant like in other states. So I'm just saying, it's like it's it's pretty crazy that that stuff could happen in a place like New York. That it's so diverse. People come from all cultures, all places. There's so much going on. But the fact that people are experiencing something like this, people have to think twice before they have to go to certain places before they go out. That was never a thing in New York, like ever. Like I don't think anyone ever be like, because in New York everything is so spontaneous, people can go to Brooklyn, they can go to Queens, they can go to Bronx, it's like here, here, here. Like, but nowadays you're like, oh, do I feel safe in that place? Do I wanna go? Like you have more things to think about. And that is just, that's changed, that, that changed the way I thought about New York City. And that wasn't like what I wanted to do. And that wasn't the place I wanted to be at. Lastly, this is like, some people might disagree with me on this, but at least that's how I felt. I would say there's almost like a lack of community and social isolation in New York City. Uh, because you meet so many people, you make, you make a lot of connections. And that's like the greatest part about New York City is like, it is so easy to network. You can definitely network, you can meet really influential people, but when it comes to actually making friends or making like this long term friends or connections, like very big connections that that will last for years, that is probably not true because everyone is so focused on their own lives, their own problems, or the things that, that is going on in their life. Just like, I feel like friendships is almost kind of like another thing, another level. And uh, they're like, oh, like, they think, nine out of 10, they're thinking about like, is this friend useful for me? Versus like, is this the friend that I want to hang out with because they're my friend? It is very different environment. Uh, it feels very different. Uh, and I, that's one reason I felt so disconnected many times. Because even at the events, that sometimes I meet like creators in my community, it would just be like, hi, hey, and like we never get to do anything, we never get to be, I don't know, like actually connecting versus like many places that I have visited, especially in California even, like I made deeper connections versus the ones that I made in New York because in New York it was straight out just a business deal, business connection, acquaintance. Nothing wrong with that but I just feel like there were so many of those happened versus like the actual friends that I wanted to make because I don't know I just feel like people have different mindsets when they are in New York. Uh, everything is so focused around their work and their goals and like they sometimes forget that like you want to have friends around. Yeah, I feel like people always use this like terminology that like oh my god Lamborghini has like only two seats like you don't need too many people but you need like friends like you need like people that you want to hang out with not just like 
just business connections, not just acquaintances that you would see once in a while and just hang out with just for the camera or just for the things that you would do for a brand deal or for this kind of thing. It is, like that gets to you sometimes. You're like, at the end of the day when I come home, like, do I feel happy or do I feel like I am so, I don't know, like lonely or so empty. Like you don't want to feel like that. And I feel like that's something I was feeling a lot. Like, and I mean a lot in New York City. I think weather definitely contributed a lot. Obviously, I mean, I feel like biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons I chose uh, to leave New York is because of the weather, because I was so tired of New York City's weather. Yes, there are times that it could be nice. Like even in the winter, sometimes it could be like 60 degrees. But 9 out of 10, it's either very cold, like I mean really, really cold, or it's like really warm and almost like humid, so humid. Like in the summer, it's almost impossible to walk. It's awful. And you don't drive, so it obviously sucks, so you have to walk everywhere. Yes, it's a walkable place, but like, I feel like sometimes people think that like, you're, people sometimes walk like 30 minutes in New York and they don't even realize that because they are walking in New York City but that's, that's like a lot of walking. I'm so glad that like I can have a car here. I had a car, like it's the same car obviously, but like in New York but it was such a hassle to have a car in New York, like having a garage because most buildings don't have garages, you have to have another garage and like to pay for that, like it was expensive. But not the fact that I don't have that. My car is literally in the same floor as me, I can literally walk to my car and I don't pay for my charging, I don't pay for stuff like that. There's so many overhead costs that associated with my car, but also on top of it like once in a while finding parking, it was awful. Yes, parking can be difficult in Miami too, time to time, but it's nothing crazy as New York. Um, and the times that I even got like scratches on my car because of some people parked too close to me. Uh, like it's it's awful like I would never I would not recommend anyone having a car in New York unless you absolutely need to have it but especially if it's a nice car oh my god you're gonna get scratches parked on the street because parallel parking everywhere unless you go into a garage and the garages are so expensive it's like if you want to drive in New York it's like don't <laughs> I mean don't don't drive in New York <laughs> I mean I love driving so I wanted to have a car but I'm glad I moved somewhere that I can drive if I want to and also walk if I want to. That's why I like so much about Miami that I got best of both worlds. I can walk if I want to, but I can also drive if I want to. I don't have to pick and choose in between. I can make my own decision in that department. But yeah, those are some of the reasons that I left New York City and it was, I feel like, finally the time for me to start my own chapter. That's what I want to actually conclude it with because I think there were obviously many, many questions that people asked about, but these were some of the reasons that I left. But obviously there are other personal reasons that is associated with it, but obviously the, my breakup contributed a lot to that department, but I did not like leave New York City because of my breakup. It was just associated with it because I would not recommend anyone to to make a drastic decision like this just because of a breakup because you're overcompensating it. You need to um, understand the problem because even if you leave, even if you move, that your problems won't go away. They come with you and I know that. So I'm not saying that like I did it because of it, but it was definitely one of the reasons that I considered it because I don't think if my breakup didn't happen, I'm not sure if I would be in Miami right now. I mean, I always wanted to leave New York City, but I think I always thought I would end up in LA. But just 
things really happen in a way that we never expected to and that's why Miami is my place right now at the moment. I'm definitely going to make an episode about what it is like to live in Miami as well but I want to learn more about it as it's been only like two months that I've been living in Miami so there's still so much I can learn but these were some of the reasons why I left, left New York City and why I don't think it's good for me anymore but also why some of the reasons people actually leave as well it's not just my reasoning there are many reasons that are included in this podcast episode that people left New York City because I was just in a, a creator meetup recently in Miami and I think not uh, like almost all of the all of the people in the group were like living in New York City at one point they all had the same reasoning and same things that we said it's just not just me who is leaving New York City. A lot of younger generation are leaving bigger cities because we want more quality of life, not just constantly working all the time. And I think that is something to think about for a lot of us. Like if you want more comfort, more quality of life, you might not be able to find that in bigger cities like New York City, San Francisco, or even LA. So something to think about and i hope you guys like this episode if you do please don't forget to rate us on apple podcast or wherever you get your podcast and i'll see you guys next week with that on the episode